Magandang buhay. Are you blessed? Bless, bless po tayo. Amen. It's, uh, it's good time because uh, it's uh, Lent time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, our message today is about the cross, but let us uh, pray first and allow the Spirit of God to come in our midst. Father, thank you. Yes, Lord, thank you for today. Father, Thank you that you are here as we gather together. That is your promise. That two or three gather together, you are in our midst. Father, we honor you. We ask you right now, Lord, to take over everything, Lord. Into your hands, we commit everything unto you. In the name of Jesus, open our hearts, Lord. Open our understanding. May we know you deeper. In the name of Jesus, let your heart, let every heart be open tonight, Father. Let every ears be open tonight, Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, that your word is powerful than to edged sword. Father, we honor you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, the title of the message today is Christ's Cross and Ours. The cross today is a vivid symbol of great past victory that involves horrible pain and crucifixion. The cross symbolizes the death of Christ, and it is also a remarkable triumph of victory. When he says it is finished, the power of the devil crashed into the abyss. Amen? Amen. When he said it is finished, the power of the devil crashed into the abyss. So our first reading today is Matthew 10, verse 38. And he who does not take the cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Our life is not worth living without Christ. Do you know that? When he say he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. God wants us to deny our earthly desire so we can live healthy and fruitful life in the spirit of God dwelling in us. Amen? Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. Yan po ang sinabi niya sa Matthew 17, 33. If we are not willing to lose ourselves for the sake of the gospel and follow his commandment, we are not worthy of him. Hindi po tayo karapat dapat sa Tagalog. All those disciples, all those disciples die for the sake of the gospel. If we, have, if we have to serve God, we have to give it all. He doesn't want half or lip service. God wants to love him. God wants us to love him with all our heart and soul. That is our priority. That he is our priority. That there's no other God before him. Amen, amen. amen. There's no other God before him. That he is always our priority. Amen, amen po ba? God said, whoever loses his life for his sake will preserve it. All those disciples during at that time, because they followed Jesus, they all died. Are we willing to die for the sake of the gospel? Amen. Are we? Amen. Oh, hindi po, hindi po tayo karapat dapat. We are not worthy of it. So it's only lip service. It's all talk. Talk the talk. We should be walk the walk. Amen? Amen po ba? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Galatians 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ live in me. And the life is what I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. This is Apostle Paul. He said, I had been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. Again, dying to self so that righteousness will immerse within you. Paul said, Paul also said that he, that the life he now lives in the flesh, he lived for the faith of the Son of the Son of God, he profoundly say, to live is Christ, to die is gain. 
Amen? Amen. He profoundly said that to live is Christ, to die is gain. That is Philippians 1 21. Totally sold out for Jesus. Amen. Amen? Amen? Can we honestly say that you are totally sold out for Jesus? Amen. Can we? Amen. No excuses. That when things come, that there is dead, the, the persecution about Christ and Antichrist, can you honestly confess? Can you honestly confess that you are totally sold out for Jesus? Can we? Yes. That's what Paul said. To live is Christ, to die is gain. See? We have to deny our earthly things so that the glory of God, the righteousness, the Holy Spirit will dwell in us. You know that Jesus lives in you, the Holy Spirit living in you. Amen po ba? Amen. If you're born again, the Holy Spirit is with you. That's why every time you sin, there's conviction. Every time you sin, you intend to repent because you are upsetting the Holy Spirit. Amen po ba? Amen. Or are you not feeling that way? I am feeling that way. I repented straight away. I said, Lord, forgive. I don't mean it the way I said it. Amen po ba? Sold out for Christ. Amen. Denying ourselves for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. First Peter 2.24, who himself bore our sin in his own body on the tree that we might, having died to sin, might live for righteousness by whose stripe you are healed. Yes, Christ died for us so we could live. Without the blood of Christ, there's no redemption of sin. We need to die so that the sin might live. We need to die for sin so that we might live for righteousness. Amen? Amen? We need to die to sin so we can live for righteousness. Sin separates us from God. Sin put stumbling block for the will of God in our lives. Amen po ba? That's the reason that you and I are separated from God is because of sin. Amen. That's the reason God offered his son as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to redeem the world. That's what my next verse is going to be. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. His great love drove him to the cross. All he asks for you and me is to believe in exchange of everlasting life. Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad that all he asks is to believe in exchange for everlasting life? <laughs> everlasting is what God is offering to those that believe in him. A life eternal in heaven. No more dying. No more pain. No more, no more suffering. And most of all, in the presence of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. You know, in the presence of God, you will experience everlasting joy that this world cannot give. Amen. Imagine. All he asks is to believe in him. All he offers is everlasting life. Salvation is free, but you have to believe. If you don't believe, there's no redemption. There's no forgiveness because we don't believe. Amen? <coughs> An exchange for believing is everlasting life. Imagine you will live with God forever in heaven. Everlasting joy that this world cannot give. Amen? Amen. So what do you do? Believe. Believe in everlasting. We will live forever. Amen? So there is forever. Amen? Galatians 6.14 but God forbid that we should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world had been crucified to me and I in the world. You know, we have nothing to brag. We didn't find Christ. 
God found us. Amen. God is the one that's sick. He's the one that is knocking in every door of our lives. Even he is the one that is still, even if you're the only one, he still died for you. Do you know that? In the parable, he lived the 99 to seek for the one that is lost. So even if you're the only one, he still died for you. We cannot brag that when we found Jesus, we didn't find Jesus, he found us. He's the one that is knocking in every door, but we had to open our door for him. Amen? If we don't open our door, if we don't open our hearts, if we don't open our understanding, we will be forever lost. I hope that we are not uh, closing our hearts to him. That in persecution and everything we are going through, there's still hope. Sabi nga ng kanta, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Amen? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's God that doesn't change. You can call upon him and he will answer. That's what he said in Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call upon him and he will answer. Is there anything too difficult for God? Nothing. All you have to do is to call. His line is free. Imagine, free line, straight to heaven. You can call the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. When you call the president, when you call the prime minister, when you call the queen, you need an appointment. But when you call God, you don't need an appointment. In your closet, you go down in your knees and pray. He will answer. That's a promise. Amen? Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Amen? What a mighty God we serve. I think, you know, we don't understand the power we have. The power we have in our hands. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, he will. He will... Um, he will leave the 99 and found what? The one that is lost. Why? Because he's a great shepherd. Apostle Paul was saying he was crucified. The Apostle Paul was saying the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. It means all his desire, his earthly desire doesn't exist anymore. He totally abandoned the world to serve Christ. And he made this clear in our next verse. Philippians 3, 8. Indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellency of knowing of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them rubbish that I might gain Christ. You know that Apostle Paul is a very rich man, but he said he count all these things rubbish to gain, to gain Christ. Amen. So whatever we achieve in this life without Christ is nothing. It is temporary. It will only bring sorrow. If it's outside the will of God and plan of God, you will surely find emptiness in your heart. That missing piece is in God's hand. So many people tried it but failed. Why? In the height of their success. Some of them committing suicide. You wonder why. They have everything. Without Christ, your life is empty. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Paul profoundly said this. He suffered all loss in all things and count them rubbish for the sake of gaining Christ. Amen? amen. He count all things rubbish for the sake of gaining Christ. Amen. Mark 3, 36, 37. Or what will it profit for a man to gain the whole world? And to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Yes, what does it profit for you and me if we gain the whole world and yet lose our soul? Naked you came in this and your mother's womb, naked you will go. Sabi nga nila, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Someone sent me a message. He quoted it like this. 
Our life is like a bank account in God's hand. Nobody knows the balance of remaining days. Keep depositing it with forgiveness, obedience, and prayer. More prayer, more power. Prayer changes things, so we never give up praying for our lost loved one. And God's plan for us, for everyone, is to be with him in paradise. Yes? More prayer, more power. Yes, it's true. Nothing knows, nobody knows what tomorrow will bring. We keep depositing it with love, forgiveness, and mercy. We don't know if I will, you know, I don't know if I will come home tonight. See? Our life is in God's hand. Keep depositing it with love, forgiveness, and mercy. Because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 John 14, 1, 4. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I will go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, where you might also be, and where I go, you know, and, that, and may you know. Amen. Jesus doesn't want heaven for himself alone. Do you know that? Jesus doesn't want heaven for himself alone. He wants to spend eternity with you and me. Imagine. If other people doesn't value you as a human being, God value you. He even needed you at your mother's womb. The psalmist, that 139, 14 said, I praise you because we, I am wonderfully and perfectly made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Hallelujah. Imagine if some people write you off, you're valuable. You're more than sparrow. Jesus died for you. Jesus will die even if you're the only one. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Tell your neighbors, come with me to eternity. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I remember my son when he was born. I said, Lord, you have given him a new haircut. Amen? I named my son after him, Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen, amen. His promise is to go and prepare a place for you and me in my father's house. There's so many mansions. Imagine, you will no longer squatting. You are no longer going to squat at anybody's coach. You, are no, you will never be homeless. Why? In heaven, there's no homeless. In heaven, there's no dying. In heaven, there's no pain. In heaven, there's no sickness. In heaven is glorious. Amen. Are you not looking forward for glorious thing? Amen. Paul profoundly said this, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Amen. So we are looking forward for the glorious time that we're going to go in heaven. You know, your occupation in heaven is to worship God. There's no other thing, there's no other uh, thing that you're going to do there but worship God day and night, day and night, and there's a joy overflowing. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Amen. Amen. All he asks for you and me is to believe. To believe, all he asks for you is to die for self. What is dying to self? Dying to earthly thing. Amen? Because even Christians nowadays, they're worldly. I'm sorry. Some worldly Christian. They're still worldly Christian. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Colossians 2, 14, having wiped out the handwritten requirement that was against us, was on the contrary to us. He had taken it out of the way, nailed it to the cross. Jesus wiped out our offenses. Amen. 
No judge can prove you guilty that deserve punishment. He had taken it out, the way, out of the way and nailed it to the cross. Jesus Christ, cry in the cross, it is finished. I set my children free. Amen. What a verdict. We are no longer condemned. We are set free. It is for freedom that Christ set us free. Amen, amen. Christ had forgiven us. We are no longer slave of sin, but adopted us to become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Amen, amen. Yes, no one will find you and me guilty anymore. Why? Because God take it to the cross. Everything is wiped out. Everything. When he said it is finished, he said he set his children free. It is for freedom that we are free. Amen? Amen. It is for freedom that God set us free. Amen? So there's a song, I am free, I am free, I am free to be the servant of the Lord. Amen? Amen. You and I are free to be the servant of the Lord. Romans 8, verse 1, Therefore, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There is therefore no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We are forgiven. We are set free. He wipes away every single guilt away from your heart and mind. Hallelujah. So you can walk with held with head held high. We are acquitted. Amen. We can shout, I'm no longer, we can shout, we are more than a conqueror through Christ that loves me. The cross of Christ and it all. The penalty of sin had paid it all. Amen. The penalty of sin paid it all. Amen. So you can walk and head and head your held high. You are acquitted. Amen. Colossians 1 20. By him to reconcile all things to himself by himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. Jesus became the bridge so we can be reconciled to the Father. Amen. That's the bottom line. Jesus became the bridge, bridge so that we can be reconciled to the Father. Forgiveness is the first step in reconciliation, justification, and redemption. We need to for, be forgiven that we need to learn to forgive. We need to be forgiven so we need to learn to forgive. Amen? This reconciliation is not something we could have accomplished for ourselves. It requires God's initiative. Because our unholiness was incompatible with God's holiness. Paul said that God accomplished this reconciliation through him, being Christ. He did so through the incarnation, the crucifixion, and the resurrection. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus became the bridge, bridge so that we can be reconciled. To the Father. Amen. In conclusion, Jesus said, He who loves the Father and Mother more than me is not worthy of me. And who loves his son or daughter, who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You know, King David said this: I would not give anything to God that costs me nothing. If it means losing your life for the sake of Christ, you will surely get it back through life eternal. Amen? If it means losing your life for the sake of Christ, you will surely get it back through life eternal. Amen? Now my question today, what do you have in your hands that you will offer it to God? King David said this, I will not give to God anything that costs me nothing. Your time costs you. Will you give it to God? Your money costs you, it's your sweat. Will you give it to God? Is your tithes and offering important to you? It's important to me. Anything you give to God that will cost you something is important. Amen? 
Don't rob God. It's dangerous robbing God. Even if you go in the street and you rob people, it will be a sin. If you are robbing God with your tithes and offering, you must repent now. Because it's dangerous. Amen po ba? It's not the money. It is in His Word. Amen po ba? What will you give to God today that will cost you something? That's my question. Will you fully love God with all your hearts, your mind, and your soul? That is what we need to do. We need to put it right before God is Lent season. You know, I give up sugar for this Lent season. What will you give to God this Lent season? Remember when he said, in the cross it is finished. He set his children free. For freedom, we are free. We no longer slave to sin. We are adopted in God's righteousness. We become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So this Lent season, remember Jesus. Remember the sacrifice. Remember the cross. Remember that he did it all for you and me. We thank God he's alive. We thank God that he triumphed in victory. In the name of Jesus. We don't serve God out of lip service only. All words, it meant nothing. It should be love in action. Amen? That we are the doer of the word. Last Saturday, I was so blessed. I was laughing all the way. You know why? It's refreshing course. The foundation, the foundation that God is building in every heart in the name of Jesus. We thank God there's Bible. We thank God that the Bible is the love letter of Christ. Read it. Read it, ponder with his word. Do it. Because one day when there's no more Bible, you will miss the word of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus.